Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Crystal here. I am doing this look today because it's a look that I get a ton of compliments on. It's really easy and I hope you guys enjoy the video. So today I'm starting off with my Estee Lauder foundation which I've already applied and I've also done my eyebrows already with the Anastasia. Here I'm starting with a contour shade um, to help blend in the color. As you can see I kind of goofed up and put a ton of product um, so I'm just going to blend it out right quick. That's why it's good for you to start kind of towards the end of your lid so that you can kind of spread the product up and blend it softer in the front. You don't want so much product right in the corner of your eye. So this color is called Oktoberfest and it's from Coastal Scents and I will leave the links below so that you can go to their website and order the paint pot. It's an awesome color to blend uh, to transition with. So just blending there. Now I'm bringing it down to my lower lash line. It's I like to do that just because it kind of warms the lower lash line without trying too hard. Um, as you can see here, I'm going to the other eye. Yeah, that's kind of a long pause. I'm kind of getting used to this editing stuff. Sorry about that. So here I'm putting in a color called Caramelized, also from Coastal Scents. As you can see, I'm fixing to show you the color up close. There it is. It's a beautiful shade. It has very minimal uh, fallout, and I love it. I usually apply it with a sponge, but I wanted it to look a little more awesome for you guys, and so I went ahead and applied it with uh, an Anastasia brush that came with my palette. So here I'm just packing on the color, and these colors are awesome. I mean, they literally will last you the entire day. So now I'm going with a color that's a little darker, just in between to, and excuse the mad face, but I think I do that so that I can kind of tell where my, where I want my crease to be, because I have a very uh, low crease line and I like my crease to be higher so I think that's why I make these faces uh, so now I'm just kind of going to continue blending in that darker color I've already done the other side as well so I'm just kind of blending this out now towards the top into that transition shade that I did at the beginning um, here I'm just bringing down that medium brown color to my lower lash line so that when I add my black liner at the bottom it can kind of smudge into these colors and it doesn't look like just a black harsh line so here's that and I'm using the Morphe Slate liner with a Morphe detail brush and so in a minute you can see I like to add a little point to the inner and outer corners of the eye just to kind of elongate it because I don't have very big eyes and I like to I guess give the illusion of it. So here I'm smudging it with the darker brown again just to kind of soften the black line. This is a really uh, sultry look I guess you could say. It's a very easy look I think. And I'm just continuing to blend out that dark line at the bottom. I like it to look really smudgy, not harsh. So I'm brushing off any fallout that's coming. I, I've i never actually done my eyes before my foundation. And with this foundation, I don't really have that issue of smudging colors in. I'll usually dust them off as soon as it comes off my lid. Now I'm just curling my eyelashes a little bit, getting them prepped for the eyelashes. And then up next, I'm going to contour with my Coastal Scents Contour Blush Palette. This is also an awesome palette. I love it. I use the white and the banana powder mixed to kind of highlight under the eyes. Sometimes I use it, you know, on top of the bridge of my nose, on my forehead. But for today, I'm just going under the eyes to highlight a little bit. The good thing about the Essay Lauder Double Wear is that you don't need um, any type of concealer, I don't think. It does a really good job of covering redness um, under eye circles, which I have, uh, both. 
So it's as easy as going back with a little highlight powder and just putting it over top. Now I'm going in with my, my MAC to bronze up the face and contour a little bit and warm up some areas. I don't know the color. I and it's I've had it for so long that it's erased off the back, so I couldn't even give you the color. I just know that it's a matte bronzer from MAC. So I contour the crap out of my nose because I think I have a huge nose. It kind of runs in the family and I'm kind of obsessed with contouring my nose. It's probably a little heavier than most people would do, but if I skip this step, I feel naked. Here I'm contouring my cheeks just to give that chiseled look, um, kind of help with the cheeks, make them look a little more chiseled, if that's even possible. So I just kind of go up the temples to warm up the face again, and then I go underneath my chin to darken that. Look at that double chin disappear. <laughs> I do it just to kind of blend all the lines and I don't have like any harsh lines here or there. I go around the forehead because apparently um, the more round your face looks or more oval, the better it is. I don't know, I learned that in cosmetology class. That's the most flattering face shape is the uh, round ovalish shape. So that's why we go around the forehead that way. So now I'm just going with a little bit of a darker shade from my Coastal Scents palette as well and chiseling a little more. And now I'm going in with my Anastasia palette and I love Mimosa, that's like my favorite color. And I go in with a smaller brush just so that I don't waste so much product because if I use other types of brushes for some reason, I get a lot of product that goes all over the place and I hate wasting this stuff so that's why I use a smaller brush that will kind of magnetize the product to it and use it on my face and not all over my counter. So I'm just kind of blending that in and I like to put my highlighter before I put my blush on for some reason but you can do it at the end like most people. This is my Morphe 9N palette which I love although most colors are a little dark I think and you have to be really careful because they're super pigmented so I kind of just slightly brush on that orangey shade just again because this is like a really bronzy tan looking um, color I want to kind of keep the warm shades and keep to the you know orange instead of pink now I'm going in for my lashes last but not least and I'm using lash grip I love this stuff it's the best that I've used so far I buy it at Sally's, it's a few dollars, and it lasts me for a long time. Do, do, do. Waiting for the lash glue to dry. So this is the best tip that somebody gave me at some point, was to let your lash glue dry for about 30 seconds before applying your lashes. Excuse the goop of foundation that I put on my lash. I will take care of that shortly. But yes, if you let your lash glue dry for about 30 seconds before you apply it to your lash it makes it so much more manageable than if you like straight up just put it on because the glue will be too wet and it won't stay in place your lash will keep kind of sliding side to side um, and just won't stick so if you wait for it to dry a couple of seconds it'll it'll be so much more helpful so now i'm just kind of pinching my lash line with the lash uh, strip just to kind of blend everything in. Spot check. Oh, that spot annoys me so much, but um, I'm just going to put a little gel liner over that in a minute to, to conceal that. A lot of times my clients will tell me, do I really need eyelashes? Can I just not use them and save the money? Um, I feel like lashes really complete the look of the eye it's just to me it makes such a difference it really adds that finishing touch to the eyes um, you can always opt to go natural especially if you're not used to wearing them but I truly believe that lashes do complete the look of an eye it's kind of the finishing touch that pulls it all together So again, I'm just 
kind of putting my lashes together with the false lashes to help blend it all in. For my bottom lashes, I use the Maybelline um, Yellow Tube in Waterproof. This is the best mascara that I've used. My mom introduced me to it years ago, and I've tried so many different mascaras in between. Just because, you know, when you work at a makeup counter, you try everyone's makeup products. And for whatever reason, whenever I use mascara on my natural lash, if I've curled it, they will bring my lash down. Regardless of brand, of price, waterproof, not waterproof, no mascara will keep my lashes up except this Maybelline mascara. It's crazy. So I think I'm probably going to address that ugly little smudge driving me insane. Now, I do use a sharp liner at times, but for this look, again, like, I want it to be really smudgy and, like, kind of natural. Um, I don't want it to be, like, really precise. I just kind of want to smudge in the black liner here and there to tie it all in to, to kind of blend the lash line. But I don't want a big, sharp line. I want like an effortless look, if that makes sense. So now I'm going into the lip, and this is going to be a NYX 904 Light Brown Liner. I love using this liner. I love using this liner with my MAC Honey Love. Um, so I, I don't overdraw my lips a whole lot. I do have a pointy cupid's bow there, but I like it rounded. I just like the look of a rounder lip than uh, as opposed to a pointy lip. So I round that off there. And now I'm going to put on my MAC Honey Love, which I obviously need to go buy a new one. I love this color. It's my favorite nude. Now I just blend it back with the lip liner just to kind of not have any harsh lines in between. Smudge it all in. Blend, blend, blend. And now I'm going to go in with my Honey Love. No, I'm sorry. Sweet and Sour. Also by MAC. This kind of just gives it a sun-kissed or like a glow to your lip. I love it just to finish it. So I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Leave me any comments or questions below. And... Please subscribe to my channel. I hope to upload a whole lot more videos. And thanks again for watching, guys.